Welcome to Talk Around Riyadh, the Wheel of Time showcast. I am your host, Joe Perry, here with my co-hosts, Jen Isgro and Tom Kakoza. How are you doing tonight, Jen? I'm doing good. I'm happy to be back. It has been a really long time for us uh, not recording a live stream, I remember, or a podcast, I should say. I remember um, when I was really mad whenever we skipped one week. We had a streak going for a while. <laughs> now I think it's okay to take a little vacation. We had a really good time last week, which we will be talking about tonight, and I'm excited to get back into it. Yeah. Tom, how you doing? I'm doing well, Joe. Uh, I guess I'm... I'm still not used to us taking a week off, but no, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I am very excited to talk about, um, talk about WatCon, which we just came back from tremendous time. And in order for us to do that justice, I don't think the three of us could do it alone. <laughs> no, we, we brought, we needed more people, someone who has a good memory as well and can tell us things that happen that we either don't remember or weren't there for. So we, <laughs> so we brought, uh, I would say one of our oldest fans turned discord mod turned, you know, podcaster now, right? You have your own podcast now, Zul, AKA Dana Lou, Dana Lou who, uh, there is no Dana. Hello. <laughs> I can Thank you so much on. for coming. How are you doing, Dana? I'm doing pretty well. I think I'm finally, like my brain started working again, I think a little bit on Wednesday. I had, a, you know, that slight con crud that you can kind of get. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you're just exhausted. So my brain has finally started, you know, working a little bit back to normal. Yeah. And uh, I'm ready to go. I feel the same way. I was... It was Wednesday afternoon and I was at work and I I saw somebody that said hi to me and they're like, you look like you're really tired. And I was like, <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Two days later, yeah. uh, it was a lot, but it was fun. We're going to talk a lot about WaCon, but we did miss some news while we were at WaCon and while we were uh, taking a week off due to vacation. So I did want to talk a little bit about that news we missed. Uh, both came from Watt Series and both are... Uh, newly identified cast members for season three. So let's start off with the first one here. Um, this was back on uh, July 3rd. Watt series reported actor Olivia Popica joining the cast of season three of Wheel of Time. Uh, according to the article, quote, uh, according to her CV, she has been cast as Jane or Jane. I don't know how you want to pronounce it. Jane. Popika is a Romanian actor who trained at the National Youth Theatre in London, UK, and the Identity School of Acting. She has most recently appeared in television series Liaison at the Tattooist of Auschwitz. Sorry, and the Tattooist of Auschwitz. Um, the exact time period when she filmed for season three is unknown, but she was in Prague during June of 2023. All right. Can, can I say something? Of course. Since... I think a lot of people, me included, I don't know if a lot of you guys, when you were reading the books, pronounced Leanne as like Leanne. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we're going to pronounce every every vowel in this name, <laughs> I think we need to give it another try. So I think it's probably going to be Giaine. That's excellent. Wait. J-I-E-N-E. I think, yeah, j i n a <laughs> or you could have the e as an e but a lot of times they do the i as an e sound so yeah. it's kind of a toss up there genie genie it's just genie <laughs> well like it's you just the name genie jamie spelled sometimes J I J A I M E. I M E. so this could be yeah. like the mm -hmm. same thing and it could just be genie genie that's what i said it in my head all right Jane. Yeah, I don't know what I wanted Let's to do. do. None Jeannie. of those names sound very Wheel of Time -y to me. She, she's Jeannie. Um, <laughs> so Jean, I dream of her. Jeannie Katie. Is she now Katie? Is that her last name? We're going to say the. Kaday. Kaday. Jeannie Kaday. Jeannie Kaday. Jeannie Kaiday. <laughs> Is an Aes Sedai, what are we doing? Is an Aes Sedai of the Green Aja. Spoiler alert revealed to be Black Aja. She's one of the 13. Uh, black sisters that leaves the white tower with Leandrin and goes to Tanchico um, in the shadow rising or actually. Yeah, no, that happens earlier. That happens in the dragon reborn. Um, 
So she has, she's in tear in the in um the Dragon Reborn, mm-hmm. and then they see her in the Shadow Rising. Yeah, she's in going, another location. Yeah, she goes to Tanchico with the <laughs> she's uh searching for the domination bands with the other black sisters. What is our spoiler level here? I just need to know. All the way to the top. We're full We're spoilers. Okay, so she's the one with the black rod of bale fire oh uh, that's in the right, palace right. who just yes. like it goes crazy <laughs> she's she's just like columns. <laughs> yeah all right yeah yes. yeah yeah so when i that. saw this when i saw this of course i grabbed my trusty uh wheel of time companion Ooh. and read data doing research <laughs> let me and tom sit here like sure <laughs> yeah so um i do yeah i love to do this this is like one of my favorite books ever (laughs) and so so i read something that i had completely forgotten from the end of the books and it says that she um well first of all she was given a task by mogadian that kind of made her blanch once mogadian sort of Mm. took over like the kindergarten class of you know the 13 (laughs) that ran away from the tower and um but then at the end, she impersonated Cad Swain at Shale Ghoul in the last oh. battle. And was oh, killed yes. And was killed by Tom Marilyn because she did not walk like Cad Swain. Yes. Jeannie Cadet, no. <laughs> That's it. She, she made, made it all the way to the, way to the end. end wow. And lost at the very end. <laughs> died at the very end. Yeah. It's so frustrating, those video games, when that happens. <laughs> You'd have to start all the way from no the beginning. Save point. No save point. Old school, old school, no save points. You have to beat it all in one sitting. It's awesome. Uh, <laughs> so if you remember, That's awesome. if you remember, a uh, last month Watt series had found an audition script or tape for a character that they believed to be Gene Cady or G- Genie Cade or Genie Akaide. JC. <laughs> JC. Good old JC. We're going to go right. through every iteration of her pronunciation. <laughs> um, but yeah, they remember they found this script. And we read it, we reenacted it, and we were on the same page as them. It seemed like it fit a black Aja, a black sister. And then look at this. We got her. It's like it's all connected somehow. Something I wonder if they if they had if they had both pieces of information at the same time and were like, let's release them like a month apart. So it looks like everything was kind of almost a coincidence. Hmm. Well that's We'll have to ask them. Are they that sneaky? Maybe they are. I believe they, they are, are very sneaky. Gotta drag they the they are that sneaky. <laughs> yes. But um, <laughs> they usually get, I will say this, from my understanding, uh, in fact, from my understanding, based on uh, one of the panels at, at, at Wacom this year, they usually get these types of information, like audition script information and casting information from very different sources. Yeah. So and they also sit it, it, on it for a while because they're trying to confirm it. Like they right. might have Correct. they've talked about this when they were I think God, they were on a like as all four of them were on the podcast a long time ago when we talked about all of this. But yeah. Um but Dana, I forgot about the bail fire, so that makes me wanna ask the question, are we gonna see bail fire this season then? We talked about bail fire, I think, a few episodes ago, but what are your thoughts, Dana? I really hope so. I mean, that'll be one thing that they can add to kind of kick up the, you know, the level of channeling. Yeah. Because, you know, they they did definitely step up for season two. And so for season three, that could be something really scary that mm-hmm. you're like, oh, these people just didn't just blow up or whatever. They cease to exist. Yes. And if you learn about what it is, and especially if they can bring in, you know, dark hounds or something else, mm-hmm. and you get to see somebody channeling it with their hands in addition to the one with the rod. So you get it coming from different areas and you, so you get it more than once in the season mm-hmm. would be really great. Like maybe you get it once and it's explained, then you see it another time. And you're like, oh, well, that's that thing. Yeah. Yeah. I have I have a question about Balefire. I don't know if this happens in the book, and I think I know the answer. But if you get bail fired, so say like whatever, Mo- Maureen bail fires Belal or whatever, and then immediately Maureen gets bail fired, does Belal come back or no? Because he's been bail fired. It depends on the strength of the bail fire. So, for instance, 
um, if the balefire touching Moraine is so slight that it doesn't go far enough back in time to include when she balefired Bilal, then he doesn't come back. For instance, in the Shadow Rising, the balefire used against Ravine was so massive. It went all the way back to the beginning of the fight when they first arrived in Camelin. And that's how Matt, Avienda, and Osmodian were able to come back. Right. Because but they were bail- fired. That's why I'm no, like- but n- No, but what happened was it. It, it has to do with all of the things that were done by the yeah. person okay. mm-hmm. being bail fired. So he was bail fired so strongly that everything he did, including the lightning that killed them, which was at the beginning of the fight, yeah. was undone. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's like a, yeah, it's like a going back in time type of thing. It's time just traveling. Keep bail firing forever and just keep it. Well, yeah, so what happened in the war power, the right? Pattern, they, yeah, yeah, they were had to stop. Um, yeah. <laughs> reality was yes, having some issues. The, the pattern was uh, coming undone, so, and that's what happens at the last battle when yeah. they're the dark is using balefire, and that's why Egwene had to do what she did to to heal it. Yeah, right. Demon Dread's just going crazy, psycho. <laughs> Um, the other casting that I have is somewhat related to the first one. And you might be like, well, this isn't going to make any sense, but I'll tell you why it's related. So last week, Watt Series identified actor Carmela Bonomi to be cast as uh, Jorin Din Jubai, who will be our first sea folk in the series, at least that we know about. Yay. Uh, Joran is the Windfinder, <laughs> if you remember Windfinders or Channelers, on the Wave Dancer, which is the ship that takes Nynaeve and Elaine from Tier to Tanchico, which is where mm-hmm. Jean, Jean goes from Tier to Tanchico. So, um, are you all excited for a Sea Folk? All right. I am. I think, I think that they'll, the make them, yeah, no. they'll make them better I on think- the show. That's what, I, that's what I think. So, we'll see less of them then. Yeah, and overall through the whole series, yes, we'll see less of them mm-hmm. than we see in the books. But right. I think that they they're an interesting addition, something different, and I think that they have potential to be made better and more interesting in the in the show. And I think it's really important for us to see channelers, female channelers, who are not of the White Tower. Yeah. So this is a really important step for us. I hope we'll be getting Aiel channelers as well. Oh, yeah. And so um, I think it's important for us to see that, that that's not all of the channelers in the Westlands. It would have been interesting, and they haven't set this part up, or at least is there a line somewhere in the second season where they talk about how there's not that many Aes Sedai left or like the the tower's kind of empty? Is that mentioned in this season? I think it is. It's, yeah. It is because the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm taking over everything. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> You're okay. um, there's, there's the scene, and it's in one of the first four episodes, I know, because I recently watched it, is that um, where the Aes Sedai teachers are all kind of standing around, and this is, this is when Le- Leandrin wants to teach, mm-hmm. and, and Alana's like, or Alana or someone is like, uh, yeah. Remember that one you ki- that died while you were yeah. teaching her? Yeah. And Shiri was like, we cannot afford to lose any. Our numbers are so small. Okay. You know, that we cannot afford to lose any. Yeah. I thought. I so it was mentioned. That. Yeah. Well, that's good. Because, I mean, that that can play into this, right? Like, you think that there's not a lot of Aes Sedai. So you just assume there's not a lot of channelers. And then we got, right, we're going to get both. We're going to get Sea Folk, it seems like. And we're definitely going to get Ideal Channelers. So. Um, we already know about Sean Chin channelers, so we're we're getting there. They're expanding it. Um, I like it. It's going to be good. Um, I think that's. So, go ahead, Tom. So I I think, to my mind, the more interesting part of this article was not necessarily that the sea folk are going to be in it because Rafe had made mention of that many 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 moons ago that he was writing sea folk stuff for 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 the season, but yeah. Um, was the episodes that this character may appear in because the director for the uh, that that uh she's 
that the actor is, is is going to be working with is the director for episodes five and six. Yeah. Which means that the girls aren't going to Tanjiko until the back half of the season, That's... which lends a lot more credence to the fact that the girls are going to be back in the tower for, for a significant portion of the season for the first half of the season. Cause they're, uh, they're, they're not going to Tanjiko until episode five or six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's assuming I know just the director is not always necessarily the same director that, that they put in the CV. Right. Um, but it seems like all the other ones we've gotten has been correct. Um, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Um, yeah, unless they use the Sea Folk for somebody else's travel, I don't. I don't know who it would be though. Um, yeah, I don't think you would cast this character, who's specific to be the one who channels, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, without the, the girls being on the yeah. ship, yeah, other channels, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. So yeah, there's another point in the column of. At least some of somebody going back to the White Tower, and even uh, and even Elaine. Yeah, well Which, spotted, Tom. Yeah, Tom's the one who does who said that was never going to happen, but he's slowly he's slowly I've, coming I, around. I, I, yeah, I think really over the break uh, that we've had, I've really changed my mind completely about the 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 who will be in the tower. I think right before we left, we talked about this briefly. I, I'm now fully on Matt's going back, going to be there too. Oh, wow. I think you're going to just see a lot. Yeah, there was, and I forgot about this. I'm going to say it now. There was a, a, I think a, like a Twitter X interview with Rafe. Like, you know, when he was just answering fan questions, whatever, where he said he was going to tr- work very hard to put a version of the, Matt versus uh, Gowan and Galan yes. fight into the series. Yeah. Yep. Right. There's John. We know that they're going to be in there. Right. And it really only makes sense to be in this kind of setting. So I think, um, I think that this lends extra credence to that. I really think that it's going to be something where people are going to find people from Camelot are coming to the tower to find Elaine and then they're going to send Elaine out again. And they're not going to tell anybody. And this is going to add fuel to that uh, tower overthrow, right? That, that, that mm-hmm. we know is going to be happening this season. So, um, yeah. I feel like we were, and when before season two started, we were all like, they can't just get started. There has to be wrap up. There has to be a beginning to this. And like, there wasn't. Everybody just was where they were supposed to be. Mm-hmm. So now for season three, we were like, okay, they're just going to get started. There's going to be no <laughs> beginning to the story. And now it's like, Oh no, wait, now they're going back. Now they're doing it the other way. It's like, yeah, I was always in the camp of they're going back to the white tower all the way back to Jordan con 2023. When oh. the, we got the information where they were recording in the, you know, in the, um, the the test chamber. Chamber. yeah, yeah. They accept a test chamber and we got the comment that, there would be season three scenes in that in that same room. I was like, okay, we are going back. These other girls will get their testing, even if we only see a little bit of it. Um, and so that's kind of been where I've started with that from the beginning. Yeah. I don't want to... I like it. Yeah, I don't want to derail the conversation, but I will just say this. I did hear a bunch of people talking... Tom, you mentioned, you know, over this break, you've kind of changed a little bit. I'm sure it's from talking to other people at the con. Um, but I heard a few people talking about the mat goes into the doorway and Ted Chico comes out in Meridian oh, yeah. Theory as well, which is another one that people are mm-hmm. are clinging to, which I don't think is going to happen. It's interesting. Um, so let's just, let's just talk about Wakan. I mean, the Sea Folk, <laughs> yeah, I think they're going to be in it. This is like a good this is a good place to put them in if you're going to put them in because of like the whole, like we were talking about with other channelers and other cultures, you get that. Plus you get, you know, a new interesting people. Well, somewhat, no, not really interesting. You get a new people in there that are probably not going to do much. I'm, I'm guessing they're just kind of going to be background characters. Like they'll do this, right? You'll get to see folk. You'll get this maybe one scene here. Maybe they'll pop up again somewhere else or just be in the background in a city. Um, I don't think it's going to be much more than that though. Maybe the bowl of the winds. I don't know. Don't know. It's too early to tell. Um. So let's 
let's talk about Wacon. Um, let's. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things to talk about. Uh, Guy Roberts was the featured guest. Um, mm-hmm. He said some interesting things uh, mm-hmm. in the opening ceremonies when uh, Innkeeper Matt Hatch was interviewing him. Um, we'll get to that in a minute, though. I just want to talk quickly about the video we got from Amazon oh. where they showed us uh, like the first three episodes of season three. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh. Shh. You're not supposed to tell people about that. Oh, oh, uh, oh. JK, JK. Okay. Um, no, we didn't get that. What we did get was a video <laughs> of Rosamund Pike saying hi to Wat Khan and also informing us that she is recording. She didn't say she finished yet, right? She said she was. No, she's, she's, she's in the process. She of, is recording. Yeah, she's now. in the process of recording the audiobook version of The Shadow Rising, which is pretty cool. So it seems like they're really going on with this. You think she's going to do uh, all the books? I hope so. A lot of books. But yeah, I don't think she'll give up in the middle as long as... It's a lot of hours. I'm still able to do it. That's a commitment to do, right? Yeah. What is it, like 400, 500 hours worth of audio? Oh my God. And does that count as a new spring? I don't know. It's it's 4.4 million words. That's all I know. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe she can say them real fast and then they'll just slow it down. The the micro machines guy? So it sounds normal, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I I will say this, you know, um, it like one that's cool that she's doing it. And I hope that she does all of them. I think it's uh, I don't know. She seems to legitimately like get excited about like doing this stuff. And I think that's cool. Mm-hmm. But also I or she didn't she didn't they, they didn't a have really to good do that. actor. Well, she is a very good actor. But <laughs> no, like, oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I, I, I think no, I get you. I, I thought yeah. she was genuine too. I, I think it's cool of um, uh, Prime Video of, of the show in general to be like, hey, this 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 Wheel of Time convention is happening out in Columbus, Ohio, like a different continent that that has it has no. These are people who are watching the show no matter what. Like, we don't have to get them. We don't have to <laughs> depend on whatever. And, like, they still went out of their way to, to, like, just record a video to say hello to us and to say, mm-hmm. like, we hope we have a good con. And I think that's, like, that's a cool thing to to do. Um, for, you know, sometimes I think we get frustrated with the lack of, like, targeted engagement, you know? And I, I think it's cool that they did that. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so, Guy Roberts, man, how awesome was he? <laughs> awesome. He was very awesome. Yeah. Um, he said he's so personable. Things. Yeah, so likable, yeah. so approachable. All of those things. I felt yeah. bad. He's just a fan, and he's so charismatic. Yeah, I felt bad. The, the The longest conversation I had with him, I was talking about how awesome his wife was in the show. <laughs> it's like you got to tell hey, your wife. you know what I'm sure yeah. I liked it you know I'm sure he loved that and he will go back and tell her uh, I, that's what I said I said listen you got to tell your wife that her speech in episode what was it two or three three the one, yeah right. three I was like that was one of my favorite parts of the entire season which is the truth I wasn't even like yes. saying that to be like yeah. I love that part and that speech mm-hmm. she does such an awesome job on that speech yeah. Um, and as a Texan, I my conversation with him and with his daughter Isabella also included that, <laughs> and we talked about how she had helped actually design the sound of the Sean Chan accent, and re- they asked her to record some sounds and things mm-hmm. for the other actors. Oh wow! Uh, in the de- in the design of it, yes. So. I also talked about her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, like the High Lady Surath. That was just High Lady Surath. Surath. I mean, Surath. <laughs> I loved it. I I love it. I love it. It's better than like we right. Re- remember thinking about it, like oh, if they ever make a show out of this, or when they're going to do the Shantan accent, it's going to sound so stupid. But they managed mm-hmm. to pull it off to do like a Southern Texan style accent, but make it sound really good. Well, 
And I'm going to say what it actually is, is an antebellum or civil war uh, sort of plantation yeah. hybrid, hybrid accent. So when we're getting all of the blood, mm-hmm. she kind of did that a lot of presence and she slowed it down yeah. and it has that sort of like soft buttery feel to it. And it's not a really twangy sound. Yeah. And so I think that's why it doesn't sound ridiculous. Yeah. Maybe these Sean, Ch- and you know, they all didn't have the same exact accent, right? Like exactly. So Surath and Turok, well, Surath and Turok had kind of slightly different accents, which, which would make sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, Sean Chen's Absolutely. a really large place too. So it's not like everyone's going to have the same exact accent. Um, it is supposed to be like an analog for America though. Right. Isn't it? <laughs> The, the but it, yeah it is but, but the continent like the land masses the americas like north and south yeah yeah right mm-hmm. and it's that mm-hmm. many people and and different kind of cultures that are all blended together so yeah, yeah there's definitely I and mean, that's from the books too they all have a general different way of speaking than the westlands but people from different parts of the shanshan empire have uh different sounding voices i i and wanted to, to oh sorry John. to rock should have had like a new jersey accent yeah I 100% need something from the Northeast. I need an accent from the Northeast to just creep in there. Ajimbura or somebody. Come on. That's it. I'll I'll be your your general, Galgan. Come on. Maybe maybe the sea folk will have like a Northeast. No, no, no. No, no. The Shan Shan. Oh, you want the Shan Shan? It has to be the Shan Shan. Okay. Shan Shan. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to play (laughs) some quotes uh, from the con. Uh, some things that Guy said that were kind of interesting, and I, of course, I want to dig into them. So I'll I'll start with uh, this one here. So when I think about the metaphysics of the Wheel of Time, because I do a lot, you know, we learn <laughs> from the show that Uno is apparently a hero of the Horn, and we know that heroes await rebirth, and as they await rebirth, they have perhaps a view of the wheel weaving the pattern until their rebirth. So, season four. I mean, from Guido Kane's perspective, I mean, it doesn't have to be real life, just the wheel and the pattern. Yeah, all right. Here, let's talk about season four really quickly. Okay. Because it's about the only thing I'll say about season four. Okay. It's going to be fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the answer you were expecting. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So that was that was Matt Hatch and Guy Roberts talking about season 4. Does Guy Ooh. know something we don't? Oh, I'm sure yeah. he knows a lot yes. that we don't. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But I don't. I don't think he was revealing anything there. No, you think, I think he was just playing. I think he was saying. I mean, I think Pandering. if he was, he could just walk it back and be like, "Yeah, I said season four is going to be awesome. I didn't say like what like that it was being made, but like if it's made, it will be awesome." I think the wording was very careful. Yeah. That he didn't say anything that can be nailed down as it is definitely greenlit. But I do think that he knows more and that he is giving us that, hey, just wait, it will happen Um, without being held to the line of, I'm giving you a firm yes, it is happening. I'm I mean, there's a lot of way to ways to look at this, right? You could say that he chose his words carefully because um if I don't know, Amazon or somebody goes to him and says, What'd you do? He's he can say, like, I didn't say that there's a season four was greenlit. He's like, I never said that. <laughs> he could do that. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm I, why would he do that though? Like, if he didn't know, isn't that like cruel? To make everybody no, fear? I, I, I think he knows. 
And then I think his statement later about all eight seasons, yes. he can couch in the same terms of, I hope we make that. Yeah. I'm going to say this in a positive way because I want that to be true. And then he can also then walk that back and say, well, that's what I was saying about season four, Amazon. Yeah. yeah. I didn't say it. Spe um, speaking of that second uh, time, I, I have that as well. So I can play that if you'd like to hear it. Uh, this is a few minutes later. Uh, innkeeper Matt Hatch uh, wanted to make sure what uh, what Guy said about season three or four was what he thought. So here we go. I'm a minutia geek, and I just want to clarify things for people that might be watching. And I want to give you a chance to maybe uh, clarify the record quickly. Um, I asked you a question earlier. And I use the phrase season four. Yeah. And I never want to take anyone necessarily just because they gave me an answer I wanted and assume that that's what they meant. You said it was going to be awesome. Did you mean season three is going to be awesome? I meant season four. So oh, my God. Right? So <laughs> <laughs> There's more. I'm trying to be so professional. <laughs> he completely lost it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and let me clarify <laughs> let me clarify i believe in my heart i believe in my heart season five six and beyond will be awesome mm. okay. yes listen good things come to those that wait and it might come in some uh, at a time that is further away than you expect uh just because these things take time and there's a lot of stuff involved but don't lose faith in the wheel of time. So, all right. So he talks about, he says, no, I mean, I meant season four. So he wasn't, he didn't, wasn't mistaken. Go ahead, Tom. You want to say I something? just want to, before we forget, <laughs> you need to take the, oh my God, uh, yeah. clip. You need, that's, that's it got to be a drop for us. Okay. I'll <laughs> see if I can. Uh, reaction. Like, like a Jimmy <laughs> Fallon reaction or something. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was like that was the fanboy behind like uh, yeah. the innkeepers, you know, persona. I was really that was a plus. <laughs> Sorry, so I just wanted to, I didn't want to forget that we need to clip that. So good. <laughs> yep. What I wanted to say um, was he did go on right, Jen, about seasons. He said, but he said, yeah. and in my heart of my hearts, I believe that season five yeah, and six four. He knows. Yeah, well, yes. I, I don't know. Thank you, John. I want to yes. read you. Did you see in the chat, Bain and she had posted the quote that he, the thing he tweeted, which I was talking about before with you guys. Oh, go says, for it. Love meeting fans at WACON. Just got asked a great question. Favorite Wheel of Time quote? So many to choose from, but pretty hard to beat. And I said I never lies, but the truth she speaks may not be the truth you think you hear. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Yeah, is I that, think I think he learned from Rafe, who is the best at the I said I answer. Was he just covering his ass? I think that? I think people were saying Guy Roberts confirmed yeah. season four, and he was like, "That is not did what I, I did." Yeah, yeah, like right. not officially, oh. not really, but maybe. Mm. It was so. It was such a tease. It's such a tease if it's not true, though. Well, yeah, but. I mean, I, I would say this. I think what he was saying towards the end was specifically like, hey, guys, like, don't start planning for season four. You have no idea when that's going to hit. Like, it's probably you're probably talking about best case scenario two plus years from now. I don't think anybody cares about that. Well, I, I, in this, I don't. Go ahead. I don't think he would have said that if. I I don't think he would have said that if there was any chance it wasn't going to get greenlit. I think so, too. I don't, because, like, if he wasn't sure and then he said that and we all cheered and were really happy, I don't, I just don't think he would have said anything. Uh, he had the full, he had full You think he was just working choice. the crowd, Tom? He was working us? <laughs> He's not coming back. What you, yeah. <laughs> he had a full choice never to see not, him again. to just say, make a joke and just, like, pass that question. He well, said he, it without saying it. I just... I think that if he knew that they, or didn't know, wasn't sure, they were all iffy on it, then he wouldn't have said that. I'm with I mean, Matt gave him, Matt gave him, we, the first clip 
cuts before Matt asks him again right oh, then. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, so Matt gave him two opportunities. And then the second time was like a significant amount later where he's like, hey, let's just go back to this. And I want to yeah. make sure you weren't like kind of spinning off the cuff and you met season three when you said season four. And he doubled down and he said, yeah, no, season four is going to uh, be awesome. And like, I, I agree. I don't think that was just, you know, telling people what they want to hear or just wish fulfillment or whatever, but it's not a guarantee. He does not get to make right. the call no. about whether season four happens or not. No, 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 no. no. Right. Um, maybe it's not even official. Maybe they just have a good feeling. I don't know. Um, interesting though. I mean, we're still waiting for season three to come out so we can talk a little bit about that. Um, guy, I just have one quick thing I pulled uh, that guy said at the opening ceremonies about season three because there wasn't really, interesting, uh, interestingly enough, there wasn't really any discussion about season three. Um, well, because Guy couldn't really say anything and I don't think he's in it, so he might not, yeah. probably doesn't even know. Uh, I don't think he would have been allowed to come to walk out if he was in season yeah. three. He probably doesn't even know. That's that. when, that's yeah. why it was probably okay. They were like, okay, you can go because you don't know anything about season three because you're not in Unless it. Unless his wife is in it. Probably she isn't though, right? Uh, Maybe a little bit. I don't know. Good question. But I'm going to play this Maybe short. at the very end. Yeah. I think, she, I think, oh, I yeah. think she's going to be in it. Yeah. But she's but only going to know episode eight? her stuff, right? Which yeah. happens with the yeah, Sean Chen. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. Episode eight. Or, yeah. But yeah, I think, I think, I think they, they'll be back. We said at the end of season three, it's going to be the end of season one. So I'm going to yeah, come back. Another, yeah, they're just going to hit another wave, right? Another, yeah. another little uh, kid. Um, I do have... Okay, this time it's going to be a boy. Yes, a little boy or, or teenager. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to play this clip of a guy talking about season three. The show took from season one to season two. Oh, wait, hold on a sec. And I think everyone really appreciated the step up the show took from season one to season two. Yeah. Yeah. And what Lance I'll here. tell you Lance is here. the Lance step here. up from two to three is just as amazing. So, mm. yeah. That's it. That's all it took. He did talk and about like, everyone really oops, sorry. He did talk about um, like how long it took to season two to come out. And he talked about the, you know, all the stuff we've kind of heard already. I will say this though, Matt just had a cram land fear in there, right? Like, come on. <laughs> At every opportunity. <laughs> so what do you think? He said, so as much as season two was better than season one, season three is going to be that much better than season two. Believe but, it. But I think we've heard that from yeah. Yeah. actors who are in season three. I believe it. And the, we heard that before season two came out, right? They were, they were, working on season three at the time yeah. and we're just so pumped they're like you're not gonna believe it like season two is so much better than season one and yet season three we cannot wait for you to get here so we we've been seeing the um interviews or at least one or two that we talked about a couple weeks ago with with like rafe and the you know sharon gillam and like the um the co the cost not the costumes oh uh, the production the, designer um, yeah, the production designer and, um, you know, the all, the, all the heads of the department. So, and then, like, season three got mentioned at the end, and I feel like they all started, like, giggling in excitement. Like, oh, we saw it. And, like, yes. they're, like, they were, like, so happy and excited about it. Yeah. Well, somebody, who was it, said that they were watching it, right? Did, yeah, it was, it was, it was they, yeah, they, yeah, they had all, all yeah. they had all seen, they had all seen it. Uh, yeah. And I don't know if that's a final version of it, but, like, yeah. they had seen it enough to like be able to say like yeah, you guys just wait i think that you know to 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 dana's point right in the in the interviews before season two came out that i think you know daniel henny said it in a few different interviews like look season one we're like finding our footing season two we like hit our stride and season three we're like off and running and yeah. uh i think yeah i think that um i think that that's not just like from an acting writing point of view, but that's from a in total production point of view. Right. Yeah. I'm excited. We didn't get any hints as to when season three is coming out. Nothing like that. Like I said, there was, wasn't much spoken about season three. Um, he talked a little bit about season two and filming. Um, he also talked about, uh, it was one funny part where he was talking about how 
a lot of the actors were having trouble or with pronunciations of names and he thought it was he was he tried to help them out right with some of them because he's <laughs> he's a book fan right he read the books yeah. um yeah. so yeah he was helping them out and then he said like the second um the second season he said you know as some of the actors were reading the books um they they were a little more comfortable with the story and with uh with the names and things like that so that was fun i thought it was good yeah and like nobody needs to do this and i don't think he did it because he needed to do it but like sometimes you hear people who work on on uh, on shows or adaptations of properties who are like you know i'm a huge fan of this thing you know i read it when i was a kid this that the other thing like he would just casually drop in like into like conversations or stories or things that he's talking about like yeah. just deep cuts i would say from the books yeah. like not not things that aren't in the show things that will never be in the show whatever and i'm like mm -hmm. yeah like he's like legit like yes, yes. legit legit right and i thought that was really cool you know i don't know um yeah he was talking about I, favorite parts in certain scenes and things like that and stuff that was not tv show stuff it was stuff that happens in the books and didn't happen in the tv show so yeah and and what i thought was was what i really appreciated was that you know he's the uh you know the featured guest the special guest of the con he could have just been there for like the main event stuff and then hey i'm going to do a signing and i'll see you guys you know whatever he did a number of panels yes like, mm -hmm. a number of panels not just like i'll be one you know whatever he did like like three i think you, separate panels yeah, jen, three. you both were on I jen was... you and dana lou were both on panels yeah. with him right jen which one mm -hmm. was yours was it five we minutes five minutes you, in we heaven the same one yeah with, and with yeah. andrew from black tower and guy Yes. And then he was yeah. also on Five Minutes in Heaven, episodes four through eight. And then he was, or five through eight. And then he was on uh, Watt Ones. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I don't know if he was on any others after that. I think I that's think, it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to remember if he was on another one. How were those panels? I didn't get, so I, a uh, confession, I saw like th three <laughs> panels and of those three, I was on two of them. So I didn't, <laughs> I didn't get to see many, I didn't see many panels. I was, running around a lot and also just kind of relaxing so uh. something that something that's really fun about having guy specifically as an actor is that he knows his shakespeare inside and out mm -hmm. and he also knows the wheel of time so very well and a lot of times you'll see him answering something with a little bit of shakespeare thrown in yeah. and so that you he's drawing parallels between characters and themes and all of that and so it's very rich what he brings to the table whenever he comes to the yeah. table and like i said he is just so he's just so personable and charming that i never felt like i couldn't approach him mm -hmm. even though he is this great actor you know that i wouldn't normally talk to on a day-to-day -day basis on the street i wouldn't know him but he is a fan and he yeah. just makes you feel like hey you can talk to me like just another fan yeah how were so so the five minutes in heaven panel that was um if you had five minutes to add to the what you did you did half of the season episode. right the, each episode in the yeah. first four four episodes yeah. um and then like it would be like if you had an additional five minutes you know, this yeah. is what you put into there. Those, so I did one of those, I think, last year, and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was, it was fun. It was definitely weird, though. Like at one point, I was just like, this, like, I'm literally sitting next to, it wasn't like nerve wracking. It was just like a weird moment because we talk <laughs> about this, and I'm like, like, yeah, like the part where the Shinarans are riding. And then I'm like, yeah. there's a the Shinaran sitting right next to me, or like <laughs> yes. right next to me. Like, I'm like, this is just like, it's just strange. God, what happened? Tell me what happened. Why did they do yeah, it? Yeah, was it like, yeah, why like it was almost like, why do you even I'm I don't even want to talk. You you do it. But it was good. Um <laughs> Well, I, yeah, I imagine was it was nice. interesting he, hearing his perspective of like what he would have added. Yeah. He didn't really he didn't really do that so much. I feel like it. he just Yeah, but okay. he he had a lot. I mean, what he said was interesting. Yeah. Um Yeah, and I felt like 
he was constrained to where he didn't want to give any impression that he wasn't happy with what they did. And so sometimes he was able to kind of say, well, maybe they did these things for this reason. Mm -hmm. And um, so I felt it was important to kind of put forth a statement that none of us on the panel were saying anything at all to say we weren't happy with what was there. And he was happy as a fan with a lot of some of the things that those of us who are not book cloaks are also happy to see, which mm-hmm. is when they we see something new. We see them put two things things together in a different way. We see things that are off page and um, they're new and surprising to us, like being a first time reader again. Yeah. And so I think he was very good at pointing some of those things out. And also he's so magnanimous in hyping other actors and the people putting the show together like he's so very very good at that and i it feels genuine it doesn't feel like he's just touting the company line but i do think he was very careful not to give the impression that he wasn't happy with anything that was in the story oh yeah i would figure that and i I imagine he was probably doing a lot of commenting on what you have the other your other panelists were saying like i would add this and he might say like oh well that's interesting you know here's why maybe i wouldn't add it or yeah well that we had a big conversation about pat and fane and why didn't they show us pat and fane like not not necessarily nailing them or draw to the wall but like something leading up to that some kind of a confrontation to show us and he was like there's a slow burn with pat and fane like in the books you're gonna see it (laughs) <laughs> You'll see it. So I think we're going to be getting, obviously we're going to be yeah. getting more Pat and Fane in season yeah. three, but I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and he, you're right. Fine. He, he made reference <laughs> to the show had already done that in some instances and that like our patients will be rewarded with Fane. So I think you're going to, we're going to get a deeper dive into who he is and what, what's going on with him and why he's different than other dark friends in the next season. I will say this. He did throw one thing about like, Hey, we spent a lot of time riding on horses. You could just yeah. put some of that in there, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, so I watched that panel. I wasn't, I didn't participate in it, but I, I agree with everything they said. I thought it was really, it was very interesting. He, you know, some interesting perspective about like, you know, just I guess behind the scenes kind of stuff. But he did really, like he said, like if I had my option, I would want more new stuff. Pretty much in every episode, don't give me more things that I already know about. Give me more, like you know, oh, was more he prime in the pump for season three. <laughs> I didn't get that impression. I think, I think, you know, um, you know, Dan, like Dana said, like there's a, like he said, like there, something that excites him about the show is the opportunity to experience new things, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. What was uh? What was your favorite panel, Dana? Oh well, for me, it was being on the last battle panel with michael livingston and even just the the working up to it discussing what we were going to cover and just digging into the real life influence for that and learning more about it and i could have sat there and listened to him for two hours yeah i was upset that was that was scheduled at the same time as the panel that i was on but i had to listen to that too but I could go back and watch it because yeah. yes. all of the panels are recorded and streamed. And if you have a WatCon virtual ticket, you can watch all of them. Um, and you can still buy it now, even though the con's over, you can still get a virtual ticket and then go back and watch the, I don't know, what is there, like 20 panels? More than that, right? Like that. Yeah, there, are, there are 20 panels plus the main sessions in the, the ends. Yeah. And, and some uh, stuff from the dinners. And I will say that poor Michael Livingston was given the wrong time for that panel and was actually napping when yeah. it was time for us to start. I, I know who and so he I know whose fault that was, so I won't say it. Though. I do too. He's uh, a trollic uh, for doing this. <laughs> yeah. Joe, I do have to say though that your panel that was on at the same time as the last battle panel was my favorite panel of the week. Oh, the meme off? The great Malkiri meme off. Yes. That was fun. I I saw it last year for the first time. I think this yeah. is this is the, they've done it all three years. I didn't. I don't think I saw yeah. it the first time. I saw it last time. It was looked like a lot of fun. I got put on the panel and I was like, oh, okay, cool. This is going to be fun. 
and I had a blast. It was, it was so interesting. So it was me and Meg from three wheeling against, um, <laughs> Josh from the black tower and Jenny, lesbian nerdy. And how many times twice we both wrote almost exactly the same memes, which is so weird. <laughs> like, That's crazy. You would not think the four of you would be on the same wavelength. <laughs> yes. It was well, the so first weird. one was pretty, it was like, obvious oh the florin gelb one what? so yeah, so every, just for gelb. like those listening who don't know basically they, we were broken down into two teams we would get a, a meme template right like a template with no words and then the audience would like kind of give suggestions as to what the theme of the meme would be and then we both teams would have to come up with you know the words and then uh they would vote on which one was best so yeah twice we both put basically the same exact exact memes which was so odd and then for the final you could pick whatever meme you wanted out of what was left, and they picked the same meme template. But we put different words. Different memes, but like same template. I posted the winning meme on Twitter, so if you follow us, you probably saw it like yesterday or the day before. It's tasteful. Okay, you know who I want is I want Omar on next year. <laughs> well, he was on last year. I think, yeah, right? the first two years. I, I know, but that's a, it's okay for him to skip a year or two. But yeah. I want him back on because he <laughs> to me is a to- he's such a meme guy. Yes. And I just love Sometimes, him. Sometimes um, the best memes are coming out of the audience. Yeah, that's not the best, but parts. there's people like Brian the Gleeman. Brian needs to be on the panel. I know he doesn't like want just, to do panels. He's shooting but... memes into the Discord chat like oh, constantly. And they're so, so funny. So good. He's ribbing like and N- Nablus and, and Matt. Whoever, somebody was in. Oh, it must have been the episodes five through eight, five minutes in heaven panel that was going on next to us, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess we were being like really loud and laughing. And I think um, somebody posted a meme I, of like, it was like uh, Tom from Tom and Jerry reading a newspaper and like listening to something and being like annoyed. And it was like, you know, this panel yeah. and then the meme. Panel. I don't know. It just like hit me. I was laughing for like five straight minutes over that one. Yeah. Oh, it was fun. It was definitely know. a lot of fun. I convinced Rob. Uh, so Rob uh, from Alkia Talks hosts it. And I convinced him that like every year they should, if they can, they should bring back last year's winners to go up against a new team. So, um, yeah, that, I was a lot, that was a lot of fun. I wasn't, I figured it was going to be a lot of fun, but I wasn't sure how fun it was going to be. And, and, and I, I give most of the credit to Meg because she was the one who was coming up with the ideas and then like we would work together to kind of like tweak the, the wording of it. So, so who came up with the last meme? That one was me. (laughs) And what was that meme? Um, the last one for you? It was Nynaeve holding the, the cup, the dirty cup of water, you know. From dirty my, water? Yeah. And I captioned it, uh, one girl, one cup. <laughs> oh, my God. It was awesome. Perfect. Because, it was because, the reveal. Yeah. Yes, because Jenny and Josh went first, and they they revealed their meme. And I was like, oh, I was like, I was like, Meg, we got this. There's no, right? <laughs> and then... They revealed our our meme, and then literally the whole audience just started screaming, laughing hysterical. And I was like, "God, we got this!" But it was like <laughs> too big for the screen, so Rob had to like scroll all the way down to oh, get yes. to the text at the bottom. So it was like such a build up, and then you just saw one girl, one cup, and like that was the end. Yeah, it was perfect. Amazing. It was, it was and I will fun. say with with something like this um that we have every year is something going to be brand new every year yes because there's always new content there's always some new pictures there's new yeah. ideas to come in yeah. and it's so fresh and new every year and um in this particular track there are multiple things where people in the discord can get involved ahead yeah. of time where they're crowdsourcing information it might be mean templates it might be yeah. um things that they want um ideas that they want for a panel yeah. that they want to feed the panelists like okay we're going to feed them this information about whatever the topic is so that is something you can jump into the discord ahead of time and um you might be asked to to put your input into things that will be on panels and i think yeah. that's really fun yeah and this panel in particular is one of those if you're if you do have a virtual ticket to walk on that's one you want to go to live because there's a lot of interaction with, like I said, in the Discord and and with the um, the live stream chat, and even people just sitting in the, sitting in the room or post or you know on their phones posting memes in there. So, 
Um, yeah, like, I'm sorry. What? Somebody posted that meme. It's oh. so, it's like stupid, but <laughs> it was being posted not even from our room. He was in the other panel posting that meme. Who was it? It was, um, oh, uh, they must Rajesh? Have... Oh, I think. Oh, well, of course. Of course. It yeah. Was Rajesh. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> he was, yeah. So, but he was like in another room posting it. Oh, my yeah. God. That's why it was even funnier. Yeah. That's so love meta, it. and I love it. Yeah, it was good. It was a good time. Yeah, there was a lot. There was a bunch of meta memes that that day, right? Because there was memes about Nablus, I think, and Matt that were being posted. About yeah, and then Nablus came happened. in and yelled at everybody. Yes. The <laughs> <laughs> like we summoned uh, him. Tom, how about you? What was your favorite panel? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I'll say I, I like the I like the five minutes in heaven panel that I attended, but um. I'll say the Watt Ones panel was a lot of fun. Um, I didn't see that. And so the Watt Ones panel is 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 like the uh, the YouTube channel show uh, Hot Ones, where guests are interviewed as they eat hotter and hotter wings. This was a very large interview panel, so um, it was Guy. It was two members of Watt series, uh, and it was the lights work, and it was the returning champion <laughs> from last year's. Um, uh, and that's Kate, that's Caitlin Hatch. Yes. Yeah. And I believe it was uh, uh seventy five percent of Watt yeah, series. Yeah. That's, so that's in and of <laughs> itself. Just Sarah from Watt okay. series, uh, Celtic Myth from Watt series, introducing herself as fifty percent of Watt series was <laughs> like I'm never going to let her forget that happened. Yeah. Uh, it made me so happy inside. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Um, Omar, Omar's like I am two eighths of one. Yeah, trying to do the math and the rest of it, yeah. right? So, um, and that was just that was a lot of fun. Um, there were certain members of that panel who were kind of uh, stone facing the hotness of the wings. Guy Roberts was not. They were, <laughs> and some of those I had some of the sauces later on that night. They I were very one, so. hot. Yeah. Um, and so, um. Yeah, I, I, but it was a, it was a that was a you know it's always fun to go watch people go through kind of um, excruciating pain and I thought there was just some interesting questions asked to each each set of those people that they didn't get the same question they they got individualized questions depending on what group they were in um, so I thought it was a good it was a good process so I know that uh, there was a a lot of teamwork there I know um, you know uh, Rao. Uh, from, you know, it helped kind of behind the scenes get all the questions together. Josh from Black Tower was uh, was the host, and Wolf Brother, who is one of the secret MVPs of Wakhan year in year out, <laughs> like was the was the head chef and 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 hot sauce. He, he's selector. the one who provided all the yeah, brought all the hot <laughs> yeah. sauces and everything too. Yeah, so I I, I really. Like I enjoyed the the panel, but I also enjoyed. I knew how much work had gone into making that panel what it was, and that was something that uh, was very uh, engaging for me, heartwarming to me. So yeah, yeah, I definitely got to go back and watch that one. Um, yeah, I almost There's, wanted. There, go ahead. I was going to say there um, is there are a few people that uh, bring special expertise to some of their panels. And um, normally I wouldn't go to a fan casting panel. That's not my jam. But fan casting with experts, mm -hmm. I was like, wait, what is this? Mm -hmm. And so when you get uh, industry experts that can come in and give their take on things, I will almost always choose that panel if I can, if I'm not obligated elsewhere just because I don't always get to hear that perspective. Mm -hmm. And so when we get to have like Jen Sedai and like Ali and Gus on a panel, yes, please. I want mm -hmm. to hear what you have to say because you have a different take on something. And mm -hmm. so when we can get someone in with a different take on something, I always love that. Yeah. Yeah. I jumped in the second half of, I think, Oh, I'm sorry. I did see one other panel. Cause I jumped in on the, Oh no, that might have been the third panel I saw. I saw two and a half panels, and I jumped in the second <laughs> half of the fan casting panel. Yeah, that was good. Um, it was good because you got an insight into like how they cast, um, and then also like some 
good, you know, choices for potentially real choices for some of the future actors on the show. Definitely mm-hmm. enjoyed that one. It wasn't like um, it wasn't like a fanboy type casting panel. Just, yeah. just every right. actor, no matter how small, is a huge star. Yeah, yeah. Jen. Did, it wasn't Jen saying Jude Law should play everybody. I did bring him up. And- <laughs> And they did discuss the whole money factor and why yeah. you would or would not be able to get some people for different roles and yeah. all of that. So, yeah, I'm I like gonna, I'm going to get you long into the show one way or another. <laughs> one way or another. Um, yeah, there's so many panels here. I definitely want to go back and watch the last last battle panel. That was the panel. It's a little upset I wasn't on that panel because as we we right we were the ones who told Michael last year that we wanted. <laughs> To him to do a, a last battle panel and then you're started. not the only one yeah. i started i started i started asking him to do this when i went to south carolina for his book signing oh, oh wow. okay nice. so then he must have heard i started from people so it, could, it was last battle or do my swells i'm like yeah write me write a book be on a panel please <laughs> any and all of this all Maybe of the he above comes back he can do do my swells or, or yeah. a different battle i hope so i hope so I mean, he's he's no stranger to doing panels talking about real battles, about some mm-hmm. fake ones, some Wheel of Time ones. Maybe we can get him to talk about, he probably would never do it, but when they do do some of the bigger battles in the show, because, right, that's one of his favorite things. I don't know if it's favorite thing, <laughs> one of his favorite things to do, but he talks about how, like, you know, movies have, like, you know, movies, historical movies have gotten, like, a lot of the battles and fighting things all wrong. Yeah. Well, didn't he, was this on, was this when Matt was talking to him on stage, when he said like one of his most favorite scenes is his biggest groan scene. And that is the arrow in the leg or the bolt in the leg. He goes, he goes, that's not how you take an arrow. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That was last year, right? No, that no was he said it yeah. this year. Oh, he said it again. He said, he said, he said that the last show year. Show came out. No, no, the show came out after year. after Watcon oh, last year. No, you know what it was? He said it on the Jordan Con panel. Oh, he said okay. that same thing on the yes. Jordan Con panel because I I watched it. I was about to say I know I heard that before Watcon. He said it at that panel. Yeah, it's a pet peeve. It's yeah. a pet peeve. Uh, I mean, when you're an armor and history historical battle guy, it's understandable. Yeah, right. you're like a medieval historian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not a medieval historian, and I was like, I don't think you that's aren't? how you take an arrow. Out of no, I was. Not, I told my wife right away. I was like, that's not how you do it. You're supposed to break yeah. off the end and then yeah. push it, push it through, or break, either push it through and then break off the uh, the back part, right? Yeah. Or like if it's already if it's already through, through then you don't have to break off the arrow part. You can just break off the other end. But whatever. Um, Jen, we did this yes. last year. Um, so there's a little thing go that started at the first WatCon where people were post on like Twitter or something like that. Things that were overheard at WatCon, uh, things that were out of context sounded kind of strange or maybe not that strange. That's all I'm going to say. Now, Jen, okay. you were looking through them and you had a few choice ones that you wanted to share of people. People yeah, didn't so follow I- the hashtag on Twitter. Some of them have the person who said it and some don't. So I will give credit to the people who said it if I can. Okay. Um, so the first one uh, was posted by Big Gay Will. And he writes, this was said by our friend Nils. Okay. Uh, hey, Joe, can I touch your horn? <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see some good ones. Okay, I know who said this, but it's not uh it's not credited. Uh Rebecca from Reading the Pattern tweeted, People I know in real life don't know I have a website where I like to stalk people. <laughs> it actually is credited. <laughs> I lied. It's Celtic Mist from What Series. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's a great um, one. I missed that one, but I saw it I saw yeah. it on uh, online and I was laughing at that. Um Malkir Talks tweets, You have a friendly thigh. <laughs> Uncredited. <What? laughs> Okay. Interesting. Another one by Malkir talks. I unoed a cupcake. <laughs> also uncredited. So here's my question with that. Does that mean like like the cupcake was the horn and it went like yeah. Yeah. Yes. the mouth? Yeah, okay. yeah. It was just right 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 in. 
I didn't know yes. if they meant yep. like they just jammed their finger through the cupcake. No, no, I think it was like, no. okay, that makes yeah. more sense. They were Uno. But it would have been your talks posted way. one that I said and he didn't credit it. Oh, what, uh, you have it in front of you? You want to say it? Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I've got to look it up, but uh, uh okay. okay. Let's see. And so let's see if it's one of the ones that you brought up. I don't ahead, know. Jen. You, you bring okay. it up. through it, maybe, and, and Dana Luke can find it. I'm skipping around, but um, so Jessica Squidai posted, Why are you crying? And that's from Agnor to Guy Roberts at the Watt Ones panel. <laughs> I guess he didn't think that the wings were that hot. Uh, this might be my favorite. Uh, Jess from the Amberlin study tweeted, Tits out for Michael Livingston. <laughs> and that was said by Pan Malazan on Twitter, also known as Master of the Deck. <laughs> yeah. Our good friend. I missed that one. Uh, I don't know what this means, but I'll read it. Uh, Delusions of Grendel tweets, I got con crushed into fucking pulp, and now I live in Canada. No <laughs> idea what that means. Oh, I think I know who said that. <laughs> Okay. I'm not going to say it. Uh, not just because like it wasn't put in there, but I think I know who said that. Um, Master of the Deck tweets, and then Kate Redding bit my finger. What? No idea who said that. Um, did Kate bite Vance, someone at the con? Wait a second. I don't, I don't know. It, it's possible. Seems like she did. I didn't. I didn't hear about that. So I hope there's no um, lawsuit. Go ahead, Dana. You have it. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And he only posted part of it. Okay. Get it in your mouth and it will melt. Oh, I, I know that one. Yes. I saw that one. That was you. Okay. That was me. Uh, I will tell you that Koala Sadai brought a whole selection of Tim Tams. Oh, she also had the Tim Tams. Yeah, we're teaching people to do the Tim Tam slam. Yeah. And, and so really, I think the whole quote might have been like, um, Suck real hard and then get it in your mouth quick because it will melt or something or, or something along <laughs> those lines. Like, and it will melt in your mouth. <laughs> but suck now real hard wrong. was part of it. <laughs> suck real hard was part of it. Yes. <laughs> Slam it in your mouth quick because it'll melt in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. I had a Tim Tam too. It was, it was a lot. There was a whole ritual for it and I was like in a rush. So I was like, you got to do this quick. I was like, I got, I'm just gonna eat the cookie and go. I got, I gotta go downstairs. Um, and I'm gonna do a couple more. Okay, go for it, Jen. So Vance, the bard of the red hand, tweets, "You know, the dick show." What, what that means? I don't know. Um, Master of the Deck has two that are kind of similar. Uh, one of them is saying, "Please, oh. sir, sign our wood." <laughs> I was there for that one. Mm -hmm. She was talking to uh, Michael Livingston. <laughs> yeah. okay. So uh, Lord Matt Cawthon on Twitter tweets, I had to text my husband. I had a four-way. What? <laughs> Not sure what the four-way is. Okay. I think that's my, is that a skyline thing? Maybe. A three-way, a four-way? Uh, oh, maybe, yeah. If Omar texted it, it was yeah. <laughs> probably um, a skyline. skyline thing. I don't know. Yeah, is, a lot of people are in the chat are saying that's definitely a skyline reference. Okay. This is tweeted by Jess again, and it's said by Master of the Deck. I don't care if you're a lesbian, you're a moron. <laughs> and, <I don't. laughs> let me see. I didn't see that one. Oh, boy. Um, one more? There. Oh, no. All right. Yeah. I, I went back to last, last year. Um, okay. This one is tweeted by the Lights Work. Uh, but it's said by Lord Matt Cawthon, I don't care about Anas. <laughs> Not very nice. Lights Not work very nice. posting. You can't it. end on that one. No, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, here's another master of the deck. Toot, toot, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and she tagged us in that one. <laughs> I think I might have said, I might have been the one to say that. I don't remember. Okay, there you go. Um, there was one that I, I heard early on and this was um even before the con started that i don't remember who i got to post this but it was i'm fanning my face with my head i would have liked so to guess, have seen that so guess who said that and then the same person said 
Um, I'm just going to lay my my head down on the table here. Will you watch it for me? <laughs> what? All right. I don't know who said that. Lesby nerdy carries uh, around the base oh, of her head oh, <laughs> on a stick. I love it. Stick. I love it. Here, will you hold my face for me, please? <laughs> like she said various things like that during the con about her cartoon yeah. head. Yeah, I saw I saw one of those. Yeah, that was funny. Um <laughs> It's so out of context. That's the that's what's funny about all these. I got a context. Yeah. yeah. They're like, what? What's going on? But I mean, sometimes even in context, they're weird. But yeah. um all right. Uh before we wrap it up, let's just I'll go around I'll go around the horn. Favorite Watt Con moment for 2024. Anyone want to start? I'll I'll I won't call on anybody. Um, I'm trying to think of my favorite moment, but yeah, I it's so it's moments. so hard to pick. But I will. A lot of times, people talk about moments with individuals, and for me, it was getting to sit down at a quiet moment with uh, Michael Kramer, and we were talking about various things, and went back to one of the very first podcast episodes I was on was on was with Vance and Rob from Malkier Talks, where we discussed. Um, them reading the Wheel of Time and the whole pronunciation thing, pronunciation spelling, and how they go about their process. And I was saying it's really amazing to me how scared I was to do that at the beginning, and now I have my own podcast. And um, we're going to get um, them to record a little something for us to put on our podcast. And so then Michael Kramer looks at me and he goes, "So when are you having uh, Kate and me?" on your podcast <laughs> and i was floored i'm like we have three episodes out and <laughs> michael kramer is asking to be on my podcast That's awesome. i was like awesome. anytime you want you know basically yeah. so that was i'll never forget it yeah they're awesome. great yeah michael kramer and kate redding were were there michael livingston came back a lot of maria simmons was back there so People come to walk on and they, they, they can't stay away. So, And so my other favorite moment was seeing Maria at the very, very beginning and say, telling her that I was like really upset that I didn't get to go back to Ogier Con and I really missed coming. And she said, I missed you being there too. Like, yeah, I, I wanted you to be there. And I said, you're one of my favorite people in the world and I would kill for her. I just want everybody to know that. <laughs> All right. Well, so I'll say that my, I, there were a lot of favorite moments and I think that, um, you know, we talk about this all the time when we do this, but like the, 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 the feeling of community in the con is uh second to none. It's really why I love going there so much. Um, Maria had to leave before the closing ceremonies were done and she had done something this time. She had come with a goal that she wanted to talk to every single attendee. Right. Who, so literally she wanted to make sure that she spoke to every yeah. single person who was at the con. So she brought little stickers and she like put the sticker like on your like your con lanyard, you know, thing so that she would know, OK, I spoken to you, whatever. That she made sure that she got everybody right. And that people would know if you don't have a sticker, like come talk to me because I want to speak to you. So as she was leaving. um, Matt Hatch, like asked for the whole crowd to let uh to let her know how much we appreciate her with a phrase that she had used once that he had kind of uh taken and applied to her saying that she's awesome with awesome sauce <laughs> and um so the whole crowd like gets up and we all say it you know like a sing songy voice together and we're all like applauding like crazy and she started to cry and like yeah. i don't normally want to see people cry but like i was very very glad that this woman who spent a large part of her professional life working on something that means so much to all of us uh and then spent a lot of time after that project was done being a part of this community and helping it stay like strong and together and got to feel the love that we all have for her uh and got to really experience that so uh i would say that was my favorite moment wow yeah that was pretty and cool you're making moment. me cry Beat that, uh, Jen. I will. I, I will say this thing. Mine's before, very selfish before now. Jen, comparison to yours. Before Jen goes, I'm going to say this. I did not get a star. I did not talk to Maria. So uh, I, I got a star you in the bathroom. Talk to her at all? You got a bathroom star? No, I did not talk to Maria at all. I got the star. 
Um, I saw her. No. I, waved, I waved to her. That's about as much as uh, I got. That's a shame, Joe. Um, yeah, look at this. You didn't follow instructions at dinner. You were told to go see her at was dinner I? if you didn't have a star. Yeah. Everybody well, was, he was told doing at dinner. He was doing text. So she went home with one star on a piece of paper and was like, <laughs> I said exactly the amount of stars yeah. for the people at Wacon, and and there was one. Yes, there was one not there. Um, yeah, I must have missed that. To be honest, I heard about it like afterwards. I didn't know that I was supposed to go up to her though. I didn't. I didn't know that part. Okay. I knew she was putting yeah. stickers on stars on people's badges yeah. to so she okay. knew she was talking to them and tried to talk to everyone. I didn't realize that I was supposed to be proactive and go talk to her. So Next that's time. my fault. I'm sorry, Maria. Next get time. two stars in 2025. <laughs> yeah, next next year, I'll make up for it. We'll have a nice, long, long conversation about whatever yeah. you want. All right, go ahead, Jen. Um, I mean, Tom took half of mine where I was also just going to say, like, just hanging out with people makes me so happy. Like, I talk to most people all year long. And they really have become our friends. Like it's, you know, over the years and getting to see people. I don't know if it's just like so condensed and you just want to get like squeeze out every moment of like fun and friendship that you can while you're there. But it's just like there's so much joy in it. So I love that part of it. But on a selfish note, I will say that um, our parody being played finally (laughs) at WatCon and everyone singing along to it made me really, really happy. We got our WatCon shirts on. That's not uh, what I thought you were going to say. Oh, hey, look at that. Nice shirt. Nice shirt. (laughs) That was my uh, one of my bucket list moments. Yes, the Kaz Band line. Yes, Jen. I, it was like one of the first ones they played too, right? So It, got, it was on Friday, yeah. So yeah. I got to live out my dreams. What did so, you think I was going to say? So we, so that got played early on, right, in the con. Later on, I don't people know. People were singing it Friday. too. Like the crowd yeah, was singing. Yeah, I know, yeah, like, it was yeah, great. Yeah. Goosebumps. That was amazing. I think it was that later that day, but it might have been the next day. Guy Roberts. Oh, Came up to you and said, like, no, it was Sunday. That was Sunday. No, no, no. no. First, no. first, he oh. came up to you to, to like, to check it. Like, did you <laughs> really sing that? Like, that, <laughs> like, he couldn't believe how good it was. Right. And then as he's leaving, he took time to say goodbye to you specifically to tell you how good your voice was. That's what I thought you were going to say. Uh-huh. Oh, so I thought you were going to say when you started talking about when you guys. said selfish. I thought that's what it was like. Oh, no. When you were what talking happened? about Guy, I thought, Tom, you were going to talk talk about how you guys talked to him and he said he listened to our podcast yeah well that's just i was like what when you told me that i was like what yeah he recognized us which i thought was like bananas but that's what so right when i first met him it was on i guess friday afternoon before before the the it started because we were setting up everything and I like was doing something and i turned around and guy was standing there and he's like oh how you doing i was like oh hi i'm joe um he said do i know you have we met before right we yeah. met already before and i was like no i was like i would remember that and i was like you probably saw me you know maybe on the dusty wheel or something like that or or in the video like you said yeah. if you watch what idol like the video or something like that and then you guys told me that he said he listened to our podcast i was like oh that's so yeah. awesome he uh, did say not all the time but no, still. <laughs> i'm not expecting him to be like a religious freaking guy like, if you're listening to this Send us a message. No, but I'm sure, like you know, it sounded like he he's listened to it. At yeah, least he had. I mean, if he turned it on for literally two seconds, I'd be the happiest person on earth. Yeah. so it's fine. So that was. I thought that's what you were. <laughs> if anybody at. listens to this, I'm very happy. That was one of the coolest <laughs> moments for me. Um, yeah, I had a I had a lot of fun at the sing along. The sing along has always has been now you know one of my favorite things to do. I love mm-hmm. just everybody just yelling and screaming songs out at the top of their yeah. lungs together. Um, especially this year was awesome because so DT was there and he came and he, st- he sat down he started playing the, the, I forget what it's called, but like the drum box thing mm-hmm. and he was doing the rhythm for it. And that was beautiful. Omar was jamming with his guitar along. It seems like we're growing every year with, them, yeah, we're gonna- <laughs> but we're going to have a full band at some point potentially. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. And I had so many people come up to me before the sing along asking me like when's the sing along happening yeah. it was the fav- it was my favorite thing last year and multiple awesome. people mm-hmm. came up to me before we even did it so they remembered it from last mm-hmm. year they really enjoyed it they loved it um so i loved hearing all of that of course yeah. <laughs> 
So that that's probably my my favorite thing. That and guy saying he listens to our podcast, <laughs> which I didn't hear directly. So, um, so these are all reasons why those of you who didn't go to WatCon <laughs> need to come to next year's WatCon yeah. because it's awesome. It's fecking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if you can't go in person, definitely get the virtual ticket yeah. and join the Discord early. We have at least three events every week for four weeks leading up to the con. Yeah. And pre conning. You can get in pre conning. You can get involved, meet people. It's just a great time. Yeah. There's right. There's always people who meet in the Discord before the con and then like, they get to meet in person and they're like, Oh my God, you're whoever, uh, you know, no one knows what anybody mm-hmm. looks like. Not that no one knows what anybody looks like, but a lot of times they don't know what, what each other look like. And you know, you're like, you see the name on the name badge and they're like, Oh, you're mm-hmm. this person. I'm that person. Oh my God. Yay. Yeah. So, <laughs> and there were some people who was the, it was your first year this year. It's if you're listening to years. this. Yeah. I know there we have it. We have it in our live chat right now. Um, I just yeah. want you to know that, just jumping in and getting involved. You are my favorite thing from really the whole experience, just because you're people I didn't know in the community. You let me get to know you a little bit. And then I got to meet you in person Mm -hmm. and just, you know, your enthusiasm just makes it all new every year. It's just like reading the books for the first time, you know, getting New, new perspectives coming into the fandom. I just, I love it so much. Yeah. I, I made it a point this year to talk to more people. Cause usually mm-hmm. I wind up talking to the same people I always talk to, which I did this year, but I did talk to a bunch of other people I didn't know or hadn't met, or at least don't remember meeting this year. And that was awesome. Um, I'm going to continue to do that. I'm going to take photographic proof so that I remember. <laughs> um, All right. So I think this is a good place to wrap it up. I mean, we can go on for hours and hours and talk about WatCon, but I don't think anybody wants to hear that much about it. Uh, You're just going to have to go next year. So the dates are already set. I think the tickets are already on sale. So you can go to WatCon.com and get your tickets right now. Buy them now. And then, you know, you've got to, or start saving for it. How about that? Start saving, putting a little, a few dollars aside each week, save up, come to WatCon. You'll have fun. And if you don't, you can come to, you know, you can come over and yell at me and um, I'll take the blame uh, for it or I'll make you Tell have Joe fun. where he can put his horn. Yeah. Or I'll, I'll make you have fun. I'll, I'll find something fun for you to do. Bring your instrument. Yeah. If you an play an instrument, like maybe a tambourine you. or, or some maracas yeah, or some. Mm-hmm. I had my kazoo and I left it up in the room uh, when it was time for the sing along. I was so mad. It was my kazoo from the first year that I brought with oh, me. That's oh, the one. Recappa. I have. Recappa gave recappa. Me, right? From Recappa. <laughs> yes. It's a reca- it's a Recappa kazoo. I keep looking at it every year. Like, recappa is this kazoo, kazoo still going to make it? I'm going to have to buy another one if it breaks, but I'm yeah. trying to make it last. You should get a metal possible. one, Jen, like a hardcore metal one that, that won't break. How much is that? I don't know. Probably like five dollars instead of thirty. Oh, really? Okay. I, I, I thought it was no like idea. a serious kazoo. Like. No, no. I mean, how much is a kazoo? <laughs> right, like th- fifty cents. Like what? I probably mean, a, a metal one's probably, have, probably like yeah. it's probably like four dollars or something. I don't know for sure, but I'm. All right. We should have got one at that music shop when we were there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Next time. <laughs> Dana, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Um, what so what you got a podcast you said three episodes what's what's the podcast name where can people find it what's it about okay so the podcast is called delving the chronicles and we are at delvers of time on twitter and it's four of us and we basically are kind have kind of been the sidekicks to various podcasts and youtubers over the years Mm -hmm. and um we're kind of know-it-alls that kind of person. We just like to talk about the minutia of things. And so we delve into things. Oh, first of all, so it's Koala Sadai, uh, Morshadi, and uh, Beth Doman, and me. That's there are four of us. All awesome people. And That's we, a, yeah, it's a great team. And so <laughs> we've already we've already talked about Utopia in the Wheel of Time. We've already discussed. I think in the next episode that comes out, we'll be talking about some of like uh, the Age of Legends um, and some of the ethics of some of the things that are there. 
and whether or not it's really a utopia. That's one of the things we talk about environmentalism and the wheel of time. And, and so things that you don't necessarily think about or that most people don't talk about. So if you have an obscure topic, some, some rabbit trails that we can go down, drop us a line on at Delvers of time and, Maybe that'll be one of our topics. We're going to start talking about, um, I think, some of the human condition and how that affects things, and maybe even the seven deadly sins Ooh, and examples ooh. of that in the Wheel of Time oh. coming up in the in the next month or so. We we plan on doing two episodes a month, and we will have a WatCon in retrospect uh, episode that will that we're going to be recording soon, sometime after Koala gets back to. The Madlands. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, I will put the links in the show notes so everyone can go click on those and listen and follow and all that other good stuff. So be sure to go and listen because someone already put it into live chat now. Oh, there we go. We've got it. In oh, live thank chat. you. Oh, yeah. And so our symbol is an open book with a um, a miner's hat with a little candle on it. <laughs> <laughs> it kind it. of. And then with the I said I symbol behind it with kind of like a sparkly like weave or around mm -hmm. it. I love it. I love it. That's great. I love the the hat with the candle instead of like a headlamp headlamp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I want to remind everyone to follow us on social media. You can follow us on Instagram at oh God, where are we? See, it's been a while since I did this. Let's start that over. <laughs> Follow us on social media. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Join us over in Discord to continue the conversation there. We also post our episodes on YouTube. So go check out our YouTube page and be sure to like and subscribe. Rate and review us wherever you listen to podcasts. Check out our merchandise and Patreon pages to support us that way. Links to all the aforementioned information are included in the show notes to this episode. Once again, Dana Lou, thank you so much for coming. Uh, we appreciate it. We love you, of course. Um, Tom, Jen, any last thoughts or words before we wrap it up? I have no thoughts. Good. WatCon 2025. WatCon 2025. <laughs> WatCon 2025. <laughs> WatCon 2025. Wait, wait. Everyone's, I want to count to three. Y'all are going to say it at the same time. Ready? Oh, God. One, two, three. WatCon 2025. <laughs> that's that's called that's called how much delay does each of us yeah. have between joe's computer and ours i'll fix it in post that's all, all fix it in post i didn't even finish i was laughing so hard. <laughs> take my earlier cut for, thanks everyone for listening and you'll hear us next time